These are beautiful animals. They are top predators, and they've been on our planet for 400 million years. Now, to give you a kind of context of time there, modern humans have been around for about 200,000 years. So you can see these are incredibly successful evolutionary magicians, almost, of, the, of their habitat and their environment. It's not just that they are beautiful, majestic animals. It's also that they have a role to play in the economy of the oceans. And given that we have representatives from business here today as well, there's a quote I want to give you about uh, uh, our, our natural world. And it's very simple, and that is that the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment. And what I mean by that is that without a secure environment, most of our successes and economic benefits would not exist. And, and that's just a simple fact. And these wonderful animals, these many different species of shark, are something that we should think about, care about, understand a bit more about, because they have a shared future with us. And their success, believe it or not, will be represented in our success as a species. We think of the shark as a terrifying creature. Well, you're more likely to be killed by a falling coconut than eaten by a shark. <laughs> and in fact, only seven people were killed last year by sharks. Um, and, um, and many, many more by um, champagne corks and golf balls. So um, I guess uh, that's, uh, you know, by, by uniting with the beauty industry to put an end to shark byproducts in our, um, in our products and celebrating the beauty of the shark and its importance to our oceans, we can create a poster child for, um, for the oceans. I think when people are aware of what's in goods and the stories behind goods, they can make more informed choices. And as a consumer myself, I struggle with the fact that, that that's often quite invisible and um, it's, it's very difficult to know. When people understand these issues, uh, then they can make more informed choices and then companies always, market trends always follow the customer. If you start with something like food, um, people are very interested in what they put inside their bodies. And so, um, and that was a very successful in campaign um, and traceability in food is very fashionable, etc. for good reasons. I mean, you just have to look at the horse meat scandal to see how much people care. But, and so we felt that beauty and the, and the skin and the body, you know, is the next closest thing to putting something inside your body is putting it on your body. So let's use that as a way to make people aware of, 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 of product and also aware of labeling. And, um, and my hope is that because of this campaign, they'll change the labeling laws. So, so, we'll have so to what are the labeling laws around cosmetics? Who, do you know, Steve? Well, as they relate to sharks, none, basically. So you don't have any requirement. There's no statutory requirement to say where the squalene or whether it contains shark product or not. And I think this is perhaps which a key is point. Dirt, like, which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and, and I think Lily's point that she made about having information and knowledge, I mean, to use the cliche, it is power. It lets you choose. And speaking as a campaigner, I would say so often in our world now, we have more power as a consumer than we do as a voter. You can make a positive difference and you can encourage a relationship with businesses. It's, you can build uh, an understanding among businesses that you as a consumer want a certain kind of product that's been ethically produced, that's been well sourced, that's sustainable, that isn't going to give you today what somebody else will pay for tomorrow. And I think that is, is central to this debate. Knowledge, and that gives you power, the power to choose. Should we though have a list that gets published as an advert I saying these products still have shark squealing in them? I personally, I mean, potentially, I personally prefer going the positive rather than negative, so rather than voicing who's mm -hmm. doing, who's using squalene, just, ma uh, I mean, shark-based squalene, making it more, like what you referenced, like clearer labelling, and I think mm -hmm. that's a big part of my interest in engaging in this issue is the broader issue of labelling and the broader issue of visibility and the broader issue of traceability, and sharks are a very kind of emotionally yeah. powerful way of communicating that, but there are lots of other issues that um, exist under the surface that a label doesn't right now communicate. And um, I think that's, that's something that actually can come potentially on a legislative level, but we can all engage in just by making, you know, asking brands whether they use squaling and then people hear that pressure, you know, and I, yeah. I think the key, there's a key point here, you, you just said, it's about ask the question. Yeah. 
You know, you can ask, asking the question, taking a proactive step forward, it's, it's a real engagement with the people that you're interacting on a daily basis with. And also the thing about transparency for anything, whether it's sharks or whether it's timber yeah. or whatever, knowing where your product comes from and having yeah. retailers who are willing to work with you allows you to make a choice. I'm hoping that people will come up to people um, at beauty counters around the world and say, you know, does this product have squalene in it? And, and maybe the, the team member won't know what to say, but pretty quickly um, that brand will, will start to train them and, and then they'll be aware of it and hopefully they'll, they'll change their um, formulation. So it's, it's a little bit at a time. I and mean, the other thing I'd like to say is it makes business sense because why as a brand would you put, um, would you rely on um, an ingredient that was, um, was going to become more and more difficult to secure supply of? In one of your best-selling products, mm -hmm. it just it just doesn't make sense. Let alone the fact that um, that the customer doesn't want it. So to me, it's um, it's a win-win. It's an obvious um, you know there should be obvious resolution to this. I just I love any kind of anyone who is uh, providing tools that make it easier because it should be easy. I mean, in an ideal solution in the future, it shouldn't even be a dialogue. With the assumption should be that you know that that they're not using endangered species because no one does that anymore. Yeah. Um, but I think that still to your point, there is a bigger cultural issue that, it, that, that I think it's everyone's responsibility to, to address, you know, because it's really, it's our own choices about, and I've made the, and I've kind of constantly questioning myself and I'm not perfect or right in it yet, but uh, I try now to buy less really mm -hmm. and buy high quality and recycle and reuse clothes and um, just, Constantly questioning my own attitude to consumption and questioning the messages that I feel like you know very noisily yeah. shouted at us all the time, <laughs> um, and I think everyone has that ability you know yeah. to to choose what culture is and what culture says basically. And, and it's it's not a perfect world, and none of us are perfect beings. Yeah. And this is the other thing I think you've got to give people credit where it's due. And if it's even, I mean, some people might disagree, but even if it's a simple choice to not use bottled water, but out of your tap or something yeah. like that. It's a positive choice and we need to be positive. And you said right at the beginning, NGOs are pretty good at giving the problems. And we are, you know, non-profit is a constant problem. And I think we need to look at solutions. And even if it's the tiniest solution, like that glass of water on your table, or if it's a big one like climate change, I think positivism, without being ridiculous about it, is a, is a much better way forward rather than just looking at the... And just having the intention, like intention yeah. is like a, yeah. it's like a tiny seed, you know, mm -hmm. like it just has so much potential once yeah. you have that intention, you never know how it manifests, whether it's the choice of the tap water or whatever that, mm. you know, it can begin very small, grows to. Um, mm. I think intention is everything. 